Good morning, third grade explorers. Today, we're going to keep talking all about Native American religion and cultures. And today, we're going to focus on a very different group of Native American tribes that actually are in the American Southwest. And we'll kind of talk about that a little bit later. Now, if you remember on Tuesday, we talked all about the Native Americans on the Central Plains, the Great Plains. So today we're going to take a little bit trip that way and down in order to talk about the Native Americans of the Southwest. So let's get started. More than 3,000 years ago, in the American Southwest, groups of Native people began to move away from a nomadic experience of hunting and gathering to early forms of farming, which you can see right there. In particular, they began to grow crops such as corn and squash. However, in such a dry and arid region, these early people could not survive by farming alone. While the land could provide some additional food, the people in this region continued to hunt and gather with simple tools such as clubs, hunting sticks, and spears. Archaeologists believe that some of these early people may have inhabited natural caves, but most lived in pit houses. In addition, to experimenting with crops, they began to hunt with bows and arrows. Some groups of native people in this region began to develop more sophisticated farming methods that included the use of irrigation, which is the ability to channel water to the crops, like you can see in this picture. And you can see right here, again, that they look like they have carved out a part of the landscape in order for this water from the natural stream to reach their crops. Now that it was possible to grow crops more successfully, these native people began committing to areas where their crops grew. As a result, they began to settle in one place. This meant that Southwestern native culture began to develop and thrive. Some of these groups of people included the ancestral Pueblo, the Magallon, and the Hohokam. The Magallon inhabited the mountainous areas of the southwestern New Mexico and east central Arizona. They diverted streams so that they could water the crops and may have even experimented with ways of storing water. The Hohokam inhabited the desert areas of what is present day southern Arizona. They built a network of canals that channeled water into their fields. This type of early engineering helped these people overcome the challenges presented by their environment. This read aloud focuses on the ancestral Pueblo who lived in the area of Southwest that connects present-day Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. This area is often referred to as the Four Corners. The ancestral Pueblo lived throughout this region. Many lived in dry valleys near smaller rivers or waterways. Having struggled with the challenges of living in a drier valley area, some of them moved into the raised plateaus and the mesas, just like the Mohogoyon and the Hohokam. The ancestral Pueblo developed ways to divert water from streams and river to irrigate their fields. There were many reasons why some of the ancestral Pueblo moved up onto the greener mesas. There were trees growing on these mesas that provided the native people with shelter and wood. Because mesas are raised flatlands or plateaus, 
they received more sunlight than the valleys below. The mesas also receive more rain and snow than the valleys, making them a more ideal environment for growing crops. However, whether they lived on the mesas or in the valleys, they were able to have a larger food supply. As a result, the ancient Pueblo population increased and their culture developed. Now, over time, they began to grow a variety of crops, including beans, which are high in protein. They began to raise turkeys and use their feathers to make blankets and feathered robes. They constructed pit houses that were dug into the ground and covered with tree branches and leaves as well as dirt. Now, the ancestral Pueblo moved on to building homes above ground. Initially, they used wood and adobe, a sun-dried brick made from clay to construct simple homes. And you can see right here, they're building, this is what one would look like. Eventually, they became skilled stone workers and learned how to construct extremely solid homes that were several stories high. Now look at this, and you can see right here the author or the illustrator of this decided to add those pictures, the nicely laid stone. You can see the stone on the floors. And you know that if we talk about ancient Rome, that the buildings that were made out of stone were often the ones that lasted the longest that are still there. Stone is very strong. And you can see they also we're using, um, they might have like a little bit of wood up here, but mostly this looks like this is stone. So this would really stand up to a lot of different weather, which is a really cool thing. So some of these homes had as many as 100 connecting rooms. These structures were the earliest forms of high rise buildings, or we think of as, you know, skyscrapers. They're tall buildings. The first rooftops of these impressive buildings had a special function in the fall. Crops that had been harvested were laid out on the flat rooftops to dry in the warm sunshine. And you again can see there's people up here and this would be used. And you can see she's even sitting on these rooftops. So they're very useful. Now, this is actually a real picture. This isn't someone drew. This is a real picture. Let's see what this is all about. The ancest ancestral pueblo began to live in large settlements or villages. It was not unusual for hundreds of people to live in just one village. These villagers eventually became known as pueblos, the Spanish word for towns. The ancestral pueblo continued to construct rooms beneath the ground. But over time, these underground rooms called kivas changed shape. They became round or keyhole shaped. A special few were much larger and used only for important religious ceremonies. The ancestral Pueblo worshiped nature gods. It is thought that they believed that humans were the first created inside the earth. Eventually, they crawled out into the sun and the surface of the earth. This was called the creation story. Each kiva contained a hole in the ground to signify that belief. So again, this is a really cool, this is still here so you can still see it today. It's pretty awesome and it looks like this one is more of a keyhole design. But again, they all had different purposes. So the ancestral Pueblo became known for their stonework, their expert basket weaving, and their pottery. Their basket weaving was particularly extraordinary. Their baskets were beautifully designed with intricately woven shapes. They were so carefully woven that after they were coated with mud and baked by the sun so that they could be used for cooking, carrying water, and even storing harvested crops. 
The ancestral Pueblo used a yucca bark and various plant fibers to make baskets, ropes, mats, and sandals. They planted cotton and used it to make lighter, more comfortable clothes. And again, we talked about that on Tuesday's Read Aloud, where different Native American tribes wore different things depending on their environment. So again, these guys are not going to be wearing what people in you know New York and even up in Alaska would be wearing with the furs and the animal hides. They're going to be wearing a lighter, more breathable cotton material, which is going to, and you can see it right here, that it's a much lighter uh, outfit for them to be wearing. So they developed pottery that varied in color, size, and texture. The ancestral Pueblo mined turquoise stone and used it in their jewelry. Now, in this picture here, you can see that she is actually almost all of them. These almost all of the ladies in this picture are wearing that turquoise color. It's kind of that bluish green color. It's so beautiful. So they were able to mine this. That means it was in the area that they were living. They traded the turquoise pots, cotton, and anything else with the other native groups. Each family ate meals together. The head man of the home offered food to the gods. He did this by throwing a small amount of food onto the fire that was used to cook the food. The ancestral Pueblo were a spiritual people who lived with their lives thoughtfully and with careful planning. The people in each Pueblo were part of a specific clan or tribe. Every clan was given an equal amount of farmland. The ancestral Pueblo were skillful farmers, builders, and craftsmen. It would have been an extraordinary sight to see a busy ancestral Pueblo village to live and walk among stone structures that blended so well with the environment. Moving through the town, you might see the ancient craftsmen at work or observe religious leaders urging the nature gods to help them. During the growing season, you could watch the conscientious or careful, so that's another word, it's a synonym, farmers in their fields tending to their crops. Strangely, for reasons we cannot fully explain, the ancestral Pueblo began to abandon their homes. Instead, they began to construct homes called cliffs dwellings beneath or at the base of the cliffs. It's possible that the decision to abandon their more exposed home was because of safety and security concerns. The ancestral Pueblo may have been in constant conflict with other neighboring groups of people. Certainly these new structures beneath the cliffs were more defensible. The ancestral Pueblo population lived more closely together in these enormous cliff structures. Some of these structures had as many as 1,000 rooms and rose out of four stories high beneath the cliff. The cliff dwelling were difficult to get to. You can see that right here, look at that. You have to go all the way up that cliff just to get to these houses. People had to climb up and down using finger and footholds carved in the rock. Nevertheless, the ancestral Pueblo continued to irrigate and tend to their fields, and their craftsmanship continued to flourish, at least for a while. And again, you can see these guys climbing up, so they're not using um, wires or anything. They don't have ladders. They're using little notches that they've built inside the rocks or carved out, for them to put their foot in their hands. It's almost like rock climbing. You just put your hand in there, you gotta climb up. It seems kind of dangerous to me, but it really does keep off those people, those neighbors that might be coming to fight them because they would have to go up a whole entire cliff to get to where they needed to be. So it was very much a safety thing. And again, that's kind of a very cool invention that they came up with to keep and protect themselves and to adapt with their ever-changing landscape. So now another mystery that we it kind of comes about with the Pueblo, is that of the ancient people. By about 1300 CE, the ancestral Pueblo had left these magnificent homes. 
never to return again. It seems that over a period of time, family groups walked away from their ancestral homes and set out into the valleys. They left behind their tools, supplies used in daily life, and went in search for other places to settle. Historians seem sure that they went to other areas of the Southwest, including the Little Colorado River regions of Arizona and the Rio Grande River in New Mexico. Scientists and historians also know that there was a great drought. Remember, drought means where this water went away. There was no water to be found between 1276 and 1299, so a little before these people moved. This would have caused crop failure and possibly starvation, so people were not getting the food they needed. Wars with other native groups would certainly have added to the struggles to survive. So remember guys, they're not only worried about not having food, they're also worried about people from other towns coming in to start wars to take over their land. So it's not a very safe place anymore to be. Perhaps too many problems arose for the people trying to live in such a cramped condition that they could not overcome them. Although we do not know why the ancestral Pueblo people left their homes, we do know that they raised families, celebrated life, felt the warmth of the sun, and left footprints in the snow. They left enough of themselves that we can imagine their lives, and archaeologists can put together some of the pieces. We are connected to them, to our own presence here on Earth, and the knowledge that their descendants thrive in parts of the American Southwest. So I will see you guys next week. Have a fantastic weekend. I'm really proud of you all. Good night.